it's another episode of Just Face with your host, Hannah Arinitu. We are here to celebrate everything female, everything womanhood. Now, today's episode is in collaboration with the Commonwealth Alumni Scholarship Program. We're going to be having a conversation about why investing in women is very important for our country today. Now, let's get into the conversation. Women are now in their career. They have gone to school, finished the school, they are in their career, but the spaces where they are are the lower cadre positions. They always remain there at official entry, official level, and the middle. So, and the reason they are there is because they cannot do career development. They are still being pulled back by where they have been given a scholarship as I was given to go to the UK, but I could not leave my husband and my children. When I got a scholarship, women of my caliber and above called me and told me, Petra, you are going at the, at the expense, you will never find your husband. I said, if he's going, let him go. I'm going for this scholarship. And you know, all the time I went through when I was leaving behind my children, I cried. My dear brothers and sisters, I could not imagine I'm leaving my children with their father, whom they have already told me that he will not be available. But as we celebrate this day, I want to also celebrate the men like my husband, who kept my children, who did not even go away. I found him there, and he picked up from where I were to this current position. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Pedro. Zahara. Okay, thank you so much, and Happy Women's Day, and Commonwealth Day to everyone. I think each one of us has a responsibility to play, but uh, what is on, written in my heart are the girls who are actually acting as women at a very tender age. I was a victim of that because I started parenting when I was about 12 years. Um, and I, I became a woman because I had given back now because of responsibility, uh, because of family responsibility. And to be honestly, I should say I am so proud of myself and I'm so proud of the women who actually show up just like I did show up and stood up, took on responsibility to um, you know, raise my siblings, but also raise myself, and not only that, pay tribute to community development that I've really honored so much, and I feel today is celebrating all those women and young girls who are doing, um, you know, such kind of roles. Um, as I actually come to an end, there is something I would want us to focus on, because I know everyone in the house is a very key partner in, in terms of uh, developing the um, you know, women empowerment agenda. And within your spaces, within your abilities, one thing that I would recommend is that let us be in position to use evidence-based um, you know, practices that would support and, and, and change the narrative and change the challenges that women and girls go through. But also in your respective ways, you could see these small ways, but do it very well and be accountable and uh, create that agency that you need to ensure that you also put a brick in terms of empowering women and girls. And with that, we all shall be in position to create the impact that we want to see in the development of Uganda. Thank you so much. Before I start my task, I would like to appreciate and recognize our chief guest today, the Deputy IGD, Dr. Patricia Achan. We are very humbled to have you today join us. Thank you so much for sparing your time. I know you're a very busy person, but on short notice for coming here today, we really appreciate you. And also for the key stakeholders in the house, as far as for being the very uh, outstanding key stakeholder for us, being a community agency for the scholarship program, uh, the Ministry in the Abdesha, I uh, win the trust and um, one young girl who recognize you as well for coming here today to partner with us today, but most amazingly to the alumni in the house around the place all of you ladies and gentlemen. Like it's always been said that when you educate a girl, you educate a nation. As a communist scholarships program, we brag over a portfolio of about over 1,800 beneficiaries uh, of the scholarships program in country ever since it was um, ever since we had our very first scholar in uh, a bit, I think 
1959 is when we sent our very first scholar. And out of the 1,800 uh, beneficiaries of this alumni program, I'm happy to note that over 57% of those are female who have achieved awards for their masters, for PhDs, and fellowships. And today we choose to recognize outstanding achievements of the different um, female alumni in the house. And this is just the, the few that are here are a tip in the ocean uh, when, when we compare to the many alumni that we have in country for the kind of work that they are doing. So today we choose to recognize some of them and um, there is really no criteria recognizing them for the work that they have shared with us and this is something we keep on reiterating to all alumni in the house. When you come back in the country as a British Council, our work starts with you to help you actualize some of those development objectives that you set out to do when you are given the scholarship. But also we want to see that sort of impact that the HCDA funding is um, doing in the country and recognizing your work is part of showcasing that impact. Dr. Patricia, again, inviting you to come and give us your remarks as the chief guest for today's event. Thank you. Yeah, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this event for inviting me as a special guest and also to a very important occasion where we are commemorating our International Women's Day and recognizing the, the Commonwealth alumni students who have benefited from the scholarship. Women's Day is a day when we, we remember and honor the strength of a woman, the strength of women. And the theme for the International Women's Day was about empowering women economically. So when we talk about the role of women in economic development and the need to generate and, 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 and utilize the strength and ability of women to contribute to this country, it's very, very important. So even as we gather this morning today, and we honor the strength of women, this day does not only focus on women, but also it reminds us of the values, it reminds us of the significance attached to networking through the Commonwealth Scholarship alumni, and also exchange of ideas, but also celebrating exceptional leadership endeavors undertaken by fellow alumni. I was particularly excited when I came in and, and, and saw Zahara and Susan and, um, and Petwa articulating issues around women in development. And I felt so proud. I was like, wow, this is the kind of environment we need to be in all the time where we generate ideas, and think about strategies on how to better ourselves as women. Uh, I work with the Inspectorate of Government as Deputy Inspector General of Government, but I did not just wake up one morning and find myself there. I had to be supported, I had to be nurtured, I went through several other organizations and contributed differently in the different spaces I was in. So as women, what does that tell us? It calls for hard work, it calls for resilience, it calls for networking, it calls for building strong social capital, it calls for working together, not in isolation, but working together as a team, because when we are together, we are much stronger. So it is a great pleasure, Nona, that I stand before you to talk about a very critical topic, investing in women to accelerate progress. Are you investing in women to accelerate progress? I will share with you some nuggets, personally, on an individual basis. Because I was helped, I always keep remembering to help others. And when you help, even if it is little resources you have put in, like the Bible says, when you give, it will be given unto you in good measure, pressed over, shaken together and flowing over. I have some projects in the countryside. In Cabarone, I have some girl children I have been uh, supporting with education. And some of them now are in Chambogo doing professional courses. I have been disappointed by some, of course, who during vacation, they, they, they get to elope and abandon the cause of education. It, it, it can be very disappointing. But there is this touchy one 
where my mother had an accident and someone from the village just came because she was in S4 VAC that no, I want to be there to help her. But she had a vision, she wanted to be a nurse. And this girl took care of my mother, carried her, put her on a wheelchair, took her, bathed her, nursed her, prepared for her breakfast. And when my mother was able to begin walking, I said, no, this girl wanted to be a nurse. So she's now about to complete her course as a, a midwife in the school of nursing in the home. So what does that say? We should invest in women to accelerate their progress. This thing calls for an imagination of a gender equal world, a world free of bias, a world free of stereotypes, a world free of discrimination of any kind, a world that is diverse, equitable, and inclusive also, where differences are valued, where differences are also celebrated. Because when you look at your hands, the fingers, is that they don't all look the same. Our fingerprints are all different. So we need to honor the strength of women. It's important to note that while we are here to celebrate and reflect on the values and the overall importance of investing in women, we continue to realize that there is still some global backsliding of the gender equality, both at a national and also at an international level for which we have a pivotal role to push back as women. Ask yourself, are you pushing back? How are you pushing back? Reflecting on today's theme, you will agree with me that investing in women benefits women and society as a whole, and therefore reversing this gender inequality which has been on our, on our, on our minds all the time, involving a lot of financial resources like the panelists were unpacking. It is therefore important to note that recognizing women's rights as an investment is crucial in creating transformation solutions that enable women to realize their rights, that enable women to escape the circle of poverty and, and, and also truly thrive as individuals in their different spaces. Investing in women with values is therefore a cornerstone to building inclusive society. Investing in women calls for lots of strategies which we can think about and talk about until the cows come back home. First of all, I want to talk about gearing public and private investments towards women empowerment. Thinking from what Susan Petro and Zahara talked about you realize that women's rights is not only a moral imperative, but also a smart economic investment. Because when women earn an income and control their earnings, their children are most likely to attend school, their families are healthier, their, their self-worth and esteem improves, and their household income grows along with the economy they contribute towards the economic development of this country. But wait a moment. When you talk about women and this empowerment and their responsibilities in bringing up families, when I was introduced, someone asked, but is it true that you're a housewife? I said, yes, I like that. I am actually a housewife. How are you contributing in that area? It takes us to the national values. There is need for values in raising children. Somewhere in the Bible it says, when you raise a child in the way of the Lord, when he grows, he doesn't depart from it. When you raise a child grounded in values, when he grows up, he does not depart from it. People are talking about caning, spare the road, spoil the child. During our time, they would cane you for coming late, they would cane you for whispering or talking in class, they would cane you for failure to do corrections. If papers are brought back, and you've got below a certain mark, you'd also get K. And it was a constant reminder that, hey, if I don't walk straight, I would get K for it. It was a constant reminder. But raising children today have changed. Things have changed a lot. The children of today are not for caning. They are for talking to. 
therefore reminding about values, principles, about truthfulness, about integrity, about respect for one another, about, you know, so many of these values. There is need for values to raise children. If we are to raise a society with integrity, with honesty, with truthfulness, with the social responsibility we are talking about, with hard work and ethics and patriotism, we need to inculcate those values in our children. I don't know how many people here have time for parenting today. Someone was asking, asking me, telling me, well, uh, doctor, I think you have 48 days, 48 hours in your day. For us, we have 24. I said, no, you set your priorities and know that there is a time for everything, a time to talk to your child and engage with them, a time to do your work and contribute in the different spaces you are in. So we need to think about Values, because values are pivotal in, a, in fostering this uh, investment in women today. Because remember, women, we are the foundation of the state. If we build that family very well, then we are able to raise children who are responsible, who will be able to take on responsibilities in future. Secondly, strengthening social care infrastructure. When we talk about investing in women in respect to strengthening the social care infrastructure for women to create decent work opportunities there is need to prioritize the initiative to increase care facilities across the country and allow women continued representation in the workforce and ultimately to allow women to take on more leadership roles in this country and this calls for social responsibility as well. Women, are we ready to take on responsibilities? Today we are looking for women of integrity. Women whose reputation is not questionable. Women who are given positions of responsibility, they will not steal from the government coffers. The time has come for us to offer leadership over difference in the different spaces we are in. The cases I deal with today at my place of work, first of all, my responsibilities about sanctioning arrests, investigations, and prosecution of anti-corruption cases. But you realize that every case of corruption comes out of degeneration of values. That is why when I talk about these values, I speak about values with passion. Are we able to demonstrate these values and principles that will improve on the quality of children we are raising, on the quality of the leaders we are raising, on the quality which will influence transformation in this country. Investing in women means investing in policies that will improve women's socioeconomic status. EOC, the lady from EOC talked about this. Equal inheritance rights and women only spaces in market, for example, will allow women to actively participate in the workplace, invest in their family land, and even take care of their families. The Succession Act today has been improved to cater for more rights of women. The Employment Act is also, has also very good provisions therein, especially to cater for women's welfare, especially on issues with really sexual harassment, in line with our values on respect for humanity. A person, a human being who is an adult and above 18 and has respect for humanity does not think about harassing anybody at the workplace. What is this we keep hearing about sex for marks in the university? What about carpet interviews? But before you get a job, when you're a woman, a beautiful woman at that, you've got to engage with another person so that you get that job. Friends, when we talk about investing in women, I think we need to push for such policies that discourage, such practices that undermine our humanity and dignity as women. If we're talking about transformation in this country, or any significant change, we need to think about investing in women. Because women have ability to multitask and do so many things at the same time. 
I did my doctorate while working. And I did it in three years. Although I graduated in the fourth year, I was working, I was initiating laws and policies in the fight against corruption, I was disseminating anti-corruption laws, I was busy drafting the amendment of the Leadership Code Act, I was drafting the regulations for the Whistleblower Protection Act, I was doing so many things including reviewing the anti-homosexuality law and the pornography law and others. But in four years, I was able to complete my doctorate. I would take leave. Thank you very much. I would take leave and go and attend the doctoral winter school and go as a visiting lecturer and lecture and come back. That is why a woman, you can be cooking matoke here, attending to a crawling baby, attending to guests, and also managing your laundry and ironing and so on at the same time. That is why investing in women is very, very significant. Investing in women, economic empowerment of women, secure income access to the development and to decent work and meaningful participation in decision-making processes are very, very significant in creating a prosperous and just society. But investing in women calls for inculcating values like social responsibility and hard work. We are not talking about women who sit down, sit back and just keep demanding for center Echimeza. The whole day they are there watching soaps and movies, but they expect that the partner, who is a husband, put some money at the table for them to go and spend. Friends, we all have to contribute to this. We all have to support. We all have to stand together. Investing in women doesn't mean that you be disrespectful to your spouses. If you're a beneficiary of the commonwealth and you've come back with that master's degree or that doctorate and you're swelling all over the place and disrespectful to your spouse, you will disintegrate that family and you will not have contributed positively in that direction. There is no way you're going to be successful in your different workspaces when you have disorganized your chambers. So investing in women means prioritizing investment in gender-based, sensitive, preventive strategies, which is imperative while highlighting the importance of having investing and in social and economic spheres. We need to reduce the risk factors which is important to create a healthy and, 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 and safe environment for women. The government of Uganda is fully committed to supporting women. I also note that the UN is fully committed to supporting women grassroots and women-led initiatives out there. We must hear women's voices and support women's rights. The government of Uganda has made commitments towards uh, gender parity, commitment towards women's empowerment, but this commitment means little if it is not backed by resources like the panelists have, have explained. So investing in women means putting resources towards women programs and projects. And this is the reason why we hear of a Mioga, the parish development, uh, program which encourages women to come in circles and build teams and initiate projects and come up with initiatives on how to improve themselves, on how to generate incomes and improve their well-being. Therefore, as we commemorate this International Women's Day, I would first of all want to thank the, the British Council and the Commonwealth Scholarship Initiative for the support they have invested towards our women and girl children, especially in Uganda. And as we even inaugurate the website for the association, it's important to first of all reflect on the barriers which have hindered our progress and the progress of women in all spheres and devise means and strategies for overcoming them, both internationally and, and, and nationally. So I urge you to continue working in teams, because if you want to go far, go as a team. If you want to go fast, go alone. 
But what is important? Is it your speed or the destination? So I think let's look at the destination. In order for us to, 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 to achieve much, we need to be united together in this. So I call upon ladies gathered here today, and even the gentlemen who are represented here, to support women initiatives in this country, to think about the national values, to think about the foundational issues that is making the center fall apart, that is bringing a problem to our development in this country. And if we inculcate those values in our children, then we shall be able to have a country with leaders who are grounded in values and will not be having these challenges we deal with today, like corruption, like violence, like drug abuse, and alcohol abuse, and so on. So I would like to wish you fruitful deliberations, and thank you very much for listening to me. May God bless you all, for God and my country. Hello, my name is Shubaya Kaslenakai. I am a child neuropsychologist and a researcher at um, Mulago and Makere University. I believe investing in women is very crucial because women play such a central role in social dynamics. Um, women um, are nurturers, they take care of a lot of things, and in the world that we are living in, women are actually holding big positions, and therefore investing in them will ensure that there is equitable um, opportunities, and um, especially for the women and the younger generation, the girls that are um, coming up. I feel like um, celebrating women with awards actually creates um, a visual opportunity for other younger girls to see an example that you can also achieve this, you can do it. And yeah, I believe celebrating women publicly is, um, is yeah, it's something that should be done and should be done often so that the younger girls who don't believe in themselves because of the system can actually get a great example. My name is Josephine Olok. I'm an alumni scholar. I have an MSc in computing. But more importantly, I'm a chairperson of FITSPA, the FinTech Association of Uganda. And I have various board roles, but my background is in IT. Um, I believe we, it's important we invest in women because uh, empowered women empower others. Uh, when, a, when you invest in a woman, she's able to uh, put her children through school, she makes sure they're healthy, and she gives back to the community, so it's not wasted. I think women um, stand, uh, are important in being able to, um, entrepreneurs, they're very entrepreneurship, they have a lot of entrepreneurship, and they're very innovative in uh, developing solutions for other women. It's important that we empower them with uh, financing, uh, with education, to address their poverty challenges so that they can uh, contribute to the, com uh, to the societies and the community. It's not just a moral imperative, it is uh, strategic, it's economic and it's societal. Empowering women impacts the whole society. I hope that you are able to pick a thing or two on today's episode of Your Space. Now feel free ladies to join this conversation further on our Twitter at Your Space Uganda. We are still in March and we are still going to have this conversation until we the women are hard. See you again next week, same time, same place, right here on Your Space.